isang mapagpalang araw. Ako po si Sharina Grisel M. Reyes mula sa Indang Cavite. At ako naman po si Luis Daniel M. Masela mula sa General Trias Cavite. Magkita-kita po tayo tuwing linggo upang samahan at tunghayan ang ating mahal na kardinal Chito Tagle sa programang The Word Expose na mapapanood sa Jesscom TV. Hi! Ako di si Paul Vincent C. Espinosa, Gikan Midsayap, North Cotabato. Ubanimin ninyo ni Cardinal Chito Tagle kada Domingo, diri lang sa Jesscom TV. Hi! We are the De Guzman family from Las Piñas. Join us and Cardinal Chito every Sunday on the Word Expose on Jesscom TV! Jesscom TV! Friends, greetings of joy and peace. I trust that you are well. Please continue exposing the word with us every Sunday. Subscribe to Jazzcom TV, then watch and share the word exposed on your feed. Thank you. Ciao, mabuhay! You are watching The Word Exposed. Let us behold Jesus, the Word Incarnate, revealing Himself to us in the Sunday readings. We are celebrating the solemnity of the Most Holy Trinity. In today's Gospel, Jesus commissions His disciples, telling them, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. Through baptism, we profess our faith in the triune God, by whose grace we participate in God's life and mission through the Church. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Ask now of the days of old, before your time, ever since God created man upon the earth. Ask from one end of the sky to the other, did anything so great ever happen before? Was it ever heard of? Did a people ever hear the voice of God speaking from the midst of fire as you did and live? Or did any god venture to go and take a nation for himself from the midst of another nation by testings, by signs and wonders, by war, with strong hand and outstretched arm, and by great terrors, all of which the Lord your God did for you in Egypt before your very eyes? This is why you must now know and fix in your heart that the Lord is God in the heavens above and on earth below, and that there is no other. You must keep his statutes and commandments that I enjoin on you today, that you and your children after you may prosper, and that you may have long life on the land which the Lord your God is giving you forever. The Word of the Lord.
to deliver them from death and preserve them in spite of famine. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen to be His own. Our soul A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, for those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you received a spirit of adoption through whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if only we suffer with Him, so that we may also be glorified with Him. The Word of the Lord. A people of the Trinity. What a wonderful way to celebrate the solemnity of God as Trinity, as Trinitarian love, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as we contemplate God, who has revealed to himself to us as triune love, we also ask ourselves, how do we become a people, a people patterned after the image of the Holy Trinity? In the first reading, we see a declaration coming from Moses you know, to the people. And I think we should keep alive what Moses uh, proposes. And it is this, contemplate the work of God. Contemplate how God has done wonders in our lives. God is not a concept. God is a living person who communicates with us. And in the first reading, Moses opens the eyes of the Israelites. Look at how God created everything, how God created you. Be amazed. Behold this wonder. No other God could have done that. Then, look at how God has saved you from oppression and slavery. Look at how God has labored so hard using the forces of creation and human beings in order to lead you out of that sorry state. Look, behold, how God loves you. The actions of God for you, creating you, saving you, liberating you. Look and behold. Then from that contemplation, Moses proposes 
So keep in your heart. Keep in your heart not only the memory, but also the statutes, the will of God, the commandments of God, that you recognize Him and that you pass this on to your children, to the other next, to the next generations, so that worshiping the true God, the only true God, you will remain His people. What a wonderful way of celebrating this feast. You know, and we know that in the Old Testament, there was not yet a full understanding of God as Trinity. But already, look at the marvelous deeds of the Lord. And from the marvelous deeds of the Lord, we are transformed as a people, faithful to God, living by His Word, forging a covenant with Him, and passing this on to the next generations. In the second reading, St. Paul, now with the revelation of God as Trinity in Jesus Christ, we are given a wonderful image you know, of how the Trinity works in us. The Holy Spirit gives us the capacity the spiritual capacity to relate to God as Father, to call God Abba, Father. Now, that, that we have been used to that, but, you know, that, that is improper, <laughs> you know, but it is by the Holy Spirit received in baptism that we are able to say, God, you are our Father. That means we claim we are children of God. But as children of God, that means we are united with Jesus Christ. Something with Jesus, which Jesus does for us. He does not treat us with disdain. Jesus considers us his brothers and sisters. And so with Jesus, we also become children of the Father. And as children of the Father in Jesus, we are co-heirs. Co-heirs with Christ. Now, what a wonderful way to be a people of the Trinity. But St. Paul says, we have also our part to play. We have to be faithful to Jesus. We have to suffer and die with Him. We should be ready to do that so that we could rise with Him. But that is possible only if we are open to the Holy Spirit. So let us marvel at the transformation that we experience through baptism in the name of the Trinity, but also the responsibility, bear the marks of Jesus in your life. The Proclamation of the Holy Gospel According to Matthew The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had ordered them. When they all saw Him, they worshipped, but they doubted. Then Jesus approached and said to them, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord A people of the Trinity, on this Solemnity of the Holy Trinity, we want to contemplate the wonders of God's love for us. As Moses said in the first reading, be attentive to how, the, how God has been working in your lives, in creation, in salvation. And the corresponding response, which is to keep it in our minds and hearts, 
not to worship other gods and to pass it on to the next generations. In the second reading, with the full revelation of God as Trinity already happening, St. Paul tells us about this wonderful transformation that happens to us. The Holy Spirit enables us to call God our Father. That means we are brothers and sisters of Jesus, which Jesus also gives to us as a grace. But there is a response. We need to be configured to Christ in his passion and in his resurrection. And that's the meaning of baptism. In the gospel, we have the risen Lord sending his disciples on a mission. And part of the mission is to make disciples of all the nations. So make known to people who Jesus is so that they would follow Jesus as his disciples, as his followers and friends. With discipleship comes baptism in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. This is precisely what St. Paul is talking about in the second reading. To be baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit means precisely to die with Jesus who is the Son so that we can rise with him in his glorious state. But that is possible only with the gift of the Holy Spirit, who, as the paraclete, reminds us of everything that Jesus has taught. The paraclete, who will also not teach anything new, but will witness to Jesus Christ. So the Holy Spirit will enable us to be Christ-like. The Holy Spirit that we receive in baptism forms in us a person who is like Christ. And if we are filled with the Holy Spirit and we are like Christ, then we are children of the Father. We can, as St. Paul says in the first, second reading, we can call God Abba. Look at the beauty of baptism. Look at the transformation that happens to everyone who is baptized. Thanks to the common work of the three persons in the Trinity. But there is a corresponding response. You know, Jesus tells the disciples, Make, the, make them disciples of all the nations, baptize them in the name of the Trinity, and teach them all that I have commanded you. So obedience, obedience to the teachings of Christ, witnessed to by the Holy Spirit, will lead us to the Father. My dear brothers and sisters, the Trinity, our invocation of the Trinity, happens every day and many times a day when we make the sign of the cross, we make it in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. At the Mass and other prayers, we always call on the Father, and then we say, through the Son, in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Baptism in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Eucharist, we ask the Father to send the Holy Spirit so that the bread and wine would become the body and blood of Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, open our eyes every day. The marvelous works of God continue. The God who is Trinity, the God who equips us through the Spirit to be like Christ, so that we can reach the Father. Maybe this Sunday, let us review our celebration of the sacraments, baptism, the Eucharist, weddings. We hope that the Trinity will not remain a concept or a mere formula. Let us take to heart 
what Moses said. Behold the marvels that God has done for you and be a people faithful to God. Trinitarian love. The word has been exposed. Let us now fulfill it. Through the apostolic letter Patris Corde, with the Father's heart, Pope Francis declared December 8, 2020 through December 8, 2021 as the year of St. Joseph. This special year marks the 150th anniversary of the proclamation of St. Joseph as patron of the Universal Church. The Pope hopes that through this year-long commemoration of St. Joseph, the Church would have a renewed devotion and confidence in Him, whom the Gospel called the Just Man. In this apostolic letter, the Pope presents five points about St. Joseph's fatherhood. And these are the springboard for our reflection in this series. First, the Pope says St. Joseph is a beloved father. There are many churches dedicated to him and institutions with him as their patron. Many have a devotion to him. Why? Because St. Joseph placed himself at the service of salvation history. Thanks to his selflessness, the mystery of the incarnation of the Son of God was brought to completion and fulfillment. Pope Francis teaches us the greatness of Saint Joseph is that he was the spouse of Mary and the father of Jesus. We might be tempted to think of Saint Joseph playing a passive role in God's plan. On the contrary, he was actively involved. Upon waking up from his dream, Joseph brought Mary to his home. And when Jesus was born, Joseph named him. He took responsibility for his wife and son, his family. He protected and provided for them. Saint Joseph's selflessness an active participation in God's plan of salvation made him great and beloved by many. Saint Paul VI beautifully pointed this out in a homily in 1966, which Pope Francis quoted. Wow, who would not love a father like St. Joseph? He transformed the ordinary vocation of spouse and father into an extraordinary and total offering of himself for God's work of salvation. St. Joseph, pray for us. We have prepared reflection points for you. Please share them with your companions. The first point is, how have you experienced lately the wonders of God's action in your life? Papano mo naranasan ang mga kababalaghan ng kilos ng Diyos sa iyong buhay? The second point is, how can the church be a more credible sign of the Trinity? Paano kaya magiging tanda 
ng banal na santatlo ang simbahan. Heavenly Father, you have blessed this humble program with a decade of mission on air. You have gifted it with the talents, hard work, and financial support of many generous people so that as your word is exposed, many more may know, love, and serve Jesus. Lord Jesus, be with us always, your production staff and partners, your viewers and benefactors, that we may not run out of courage, zeal, and charity in fulfilling our mission daily. And when our limitations and weaknesses surface, please ask the Father to send the Holy Spirit to purify us and set our hearts on fire with renewed faith, hope, and love, so we may serve you for many more years to come. Amen. Friends, thank you for your company. We pray that the Word of God would find fulfillment in your life and His blessings be always upon you. And we hope you could be with us again next Sunday here on The Word Exposed. Yeah.